My question then is, you know, a lot of people have added fruits to their meat only diet and they say their sleep is better, their energy is better and everything has changed for them. What are like, why, if, if both of them are now activating the Randall cycle, is it one that they're too early in this switch of a journey? So they're not seeing the adverse effects or why are they just feeling like they feel better? Because if you eat fruit, fruit is the sugar and fruit is fructose fructose does not actually become right. carbohydrate in the form of glucose it is dealt with directly by the liver and it is transmuted in the body directly to triacylglyceride in other words fat and that fat is stored on your body which tells your body that it's over replete with energy and nutrient that can give you a sense of relaxation satisfaction energy to a certain level until you become obese when it, then it will become a problem however you will also because of the obesity or the obesogenesis or indeed because of even the mere fact that your metabolism is in anabolic mode that in and of itself right. necessarily means that you will be insulin resistant that's it's part of the inherent mechanism you can't get away from that so the fact that you're just storing energy and you're not ever tapping into those stores your body thinks everything's fine i can relax it's all good and you'll have those that sense of well-being to a certain point as i say once you get beyond a certain level of obesity it's all going to turn very very belly up for you you're going to be inflamed you're going to have all sorts of problems that, that come from that inflammation you're effectively going to become a type 2 diabetic if you go far enough you will actually cause yourself to become a type 1 diabetic as well through that series of events fruit is what our ancestors lived on more than five million years ago fruit is not food for human beings now let's get back to that two weeks a year thing with the berries and stuff or the seasonal fruits okay. whatever here's the thing when are berries fruits those kind of things ripe at the end of the fall just prior to the winter eat right. those things for a couple of weeks activate your randall cycle fully for a couple of weeks put some fat on that you can use for energy during the winter when plant materials and prey are going to be sparse yeah. hello nature's a great thing isn't it makes perfect right. sense however nowadays we fly it's funny food because from all over the world don't we all year round mistake it's funny because people will tell me well dr saladino lives in near the tropics mm. or near the equator yeah. and so he has fruit all around so it's natural for him but he's not from there no, he not. just moved there no, not right. too long ago that's right i i just find it it's um anytime i share about fruit uh people get yeah. very upset yeah paul's genes are european in origin not tropical yes. simple as that the, the closer someone's genes for the last 100 generations or so are derived around the equator, the more that person tends to have a capacity to tolerate those kind of food choices. Right. Still doesn't mean it's right for you. You're still a human being. You are still an obligate hypercarnivore, sure. and fruit is not the right food for you. Flesh and animal Especially fatters. the fruit that we eat, right? Especially the fruit that we eat nowadays – yeah. And I mean, my ancestors, I think if you were to go back, it's more from the Mongolians and they ate a lot of meat and milk. Yeah. Like that was their diet. Yeah. So I think it makes sense why carnivore works really well for me and my parents who are both diabetic and had um, hypercholesteremia and now they're well eating a meat-based diet. It's just interesting that people say you can't do this diet long-term because the question is why? Like, why couldn't you do this long-term? Exactly. Everything they've got that suggests reasons why you shouldn't are all false. They're all reductionist. They're all based on epidemiological nonsense that is not even science, let alone, you know, all the all the things that we've talked about a million times, like, is cholesterol bad for you? No, it isn't. Um, will you die of scurvy if you don't eat a bunch of fruit? No, you won't. Will too much iron in your body be a problem? Not unless you've got hemochromatosis or a similar complaint. You know, so for the vast majority of people, absolutely not, because you'll excrete any excess iron you don't need. Same is true of cholesterol, by the way. Will red meat and give you cancer? No. Will red meat cause heart disease? No. No evidence suggests that that is so at all in any way, shape, or form. It's all ideology. It's all propaganda there to try and push various agendas on people if you want to know about human nutrition science the last place you should look is in human nutrition science circles because it doesn't exist 
it's ideologically driven, it's propaganda driven, it's theologically driven, a lot of it yeah. too, actually. Where you need to look as to the actual valid empirical evidences from science outside of so-called nutrition science. So we're talking anthropology, we're talking stable isotope testing, we're talking Darwinian. I'm not even going to call it Darwinian theory. It's a fact. Human beings evolve. Get over it. We're talking about comparative anatomy and physiology. All of those things point in exactly the same direction, and that is human beings are obligate hypercarnivores. We are not designed for eating and um, for eating plant material. Not at all. Not ever. We don't need any of it. Not one gram ever. None. Sure, various plants and things can be used for medicinal purpose. We've known about that for millennia. Humans have been quite good at working out what's good for what in that regard. But, but as in terms of food, that's animals, people, not plants. End of. Period. Yep. So in terms of the, the fruit and meat, my guess is, I'm sure somebody listening is going to go, well, I only have one food today. It's mm -hmm. not a big deal. Mm -hmm. What amount of glucose, if someone is trying to, you know, move the needle or biohack this whole Randall cycle, yep. what amount do you think? <laughs> it's quite individual in terms of what your tolerance to that abuse sure. is. Make no mistake, any amount of fruit whatsoever is self-abuse. The immediate effect of that abuse on your body, as determined by your genes in the situation that you've placed those genes, the environment in which you live, your lifestyle, all individual, okay? Paul is very active. He will get away with this for a number of years and show no ill effect. Nothing that we can tell immediately. But tune in in 20 years from now if Paul doesn't wake up and realize that he's got this wrong, and you will see that Paul will have a problem. There will be a health problem, and it will be related to insulin resistance obesogenesis, there will be a problem. I, I can't tell you how much of a problem yeah, it will I, be. It, it's, it's very individual. But it, mm -hmm. the, the best way to avoid a problem at all is to avoid the cause of the problem completely. It's like saying, how many cigarettes can I smoke yes. a day without getting lung cancer? Well, I don't know. For you, you right. might be able to smoke more cigarettes than I would. Sure. My grandma sure. smoked for 90 years and yeah, never got I, lung I, cancer. I, I, well, sure, fine, great. N equals one. But that doesn't mean we should smoke. Right. Same yes, with fruit. I, I completely agree with that. Fruit is not food for human beings. Thank you. I think that's not how fruit was in nature. We have selectively bred fruit over generations to be sweeter, juicier, yes. less fibrous, more full of fruit. It's, just, it's another manufactured food. So just stay away from fruit altogether. Fruit is not your friend. You do not need fruit. And while I'm at it, honey. Honey is sugar. Oh, yeah. Honey is, like, I've seen Dr. Saladino make videos suggesting that honey is not just sugar. Yes, it is, Paul. It is sugar. Sorry. Sugar is sugar and honey is sugar. Don't eat sugar. You're just asking for a problem right. there. So I know from my clients, though, and even my mother who was diabetic for decades, who was on metformin, mm -hmm. if they consume honey, their blood sugar goes up. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. Fancy that. Eat sugar, your, your blood sugar goes up. Incredible. I can't work out how that happens. No, that, I'm not, I saw that video. I think I even responded to it and made a video debunking the so-called evidence that Paul showed. It was just absolute pseudoscientific crack pottery and nonsense. It was garbage, complete garbage from top to bottom. Okay. I was really disappointed. You know, I really thought Paul had a bigger, uh, had a better handle on science than that. Unfortunately, apparently he doesn't. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. There was one a study that some of his, I guess, fans sent me about fructose and why fructose is not bad. Mm. And then I looked into the studies because I just am so tired of this conversation about how fructose is good for us. Mm. And in the study, the one of the conversations, I mean, the whole thing was basically funded by Coca-Cola, yeah. who makes a fructose rich sodas. And it's just how did how did anyone miss this? You click on a button for the, you know, the acknowledgments yeah. and the, the all of the people that were part of that paper were part of were funded by Coca-Cola. Mm. And how did we miss that sharing a study like that, you know? Ideology.